On today's show, a craftsman creates a legacy. The stuff is bending pretty nice. It's the lure of Minnesota-made toboggans. We find out who celebrates Minnesota owls. Delicious comfort food. And check out a new tasty twist on your mom's old meatloaf recipe. How is it? Very good. Very good. Minnesota Bound. Presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to the show. Check it out, this is the Shirk Family Toboggan, hand built by my grandfather back in 1975. How cool is that? You know, handcrafting toboggan seems to be a slow dying art. Yeah, except up in War Road, Minnesota, where the craft lives on. In War Road, Minnesota, winter's snowy blanket makes everything seem peaceful. Here at this quiet backyard workshop, the day is just getting started. And for the Heron family business, let's just say the snowy conditions are perfect. This one's too short. We shoot to get them like 16 foot one. John Heron is a craftsman of a winter tradition that's centuries old, making wooden toboggans by hand. My understanding is that wooden sleds showed up in Canada about the time of the fur trade. So it was probably a European influence. And the first sleds were toboggans that were pulled by hand for a hunter on snowshoes. A carpenter by trade, Heron credits his uncle for getting him into the toboggan business. John's uncle had heard of a toboggan shortage in the 1990s and encouraged John to take up an apprenticeship with a respected toboggan maker who lived in Manitoba, Canada. It's a tool, I guess I think of it as a tool. The people that are buying our toboggans don't have a lot of resource, but it's, it's a major purchase for them. It's the main thing. They, they need a snowmobile to travel there and they need a sled. It's not an extra thing or it's not like a, a hobby thing or a, you know sporting goods or anything like that. It's a, it's a part of a necessity. We put a taper in the end that's gonna be bent. John mastered the craft, and Northern Toboggan and Sled was born. Since then, toboggan building has been a family affair. We make toboggans. We've always made toboggans, I guess, as, about as far back as I can remember. Um, it's just been our family farm. It's just been something that uh, my dad does, and, and we help out along the way as, as much as we can. And while John is now master craftsman, his work highly regarded, it's time for him to share the art of toboggan making, after all. There's the steam chamber right there. He's the only one who can. But who make them commercially to supply. I think I'm the last guy. The stuff is bending pretty nice. Oh. We call it a bending jig. That's what gives you the leverage to bend the board, but also that's how the board is stored until it's dried. Can you get that in, Hammond? While John's children take part in other areas of the business, he needed to find an artisan of wood, like himself. What's really gonna be key is that we get the right apprentice in here, person who is going to learn the trade and uh, enjoy doing it. Meet 26-year-old Ammon Jeffs, the apprentice. I really enjoy learning these skills from the things that have been done for years and years to know how it was done, instead of losing the ways it was done before. That's a way to put it. John and Ammon have been working side by side in the shop since last fall, teaching and learning the art.
that clamp was still tight. Yes. If we didn't keep it up, it would be a lost art. It would be. Yeah. Like many other arts from even one or two centuries ago. And Ammon's getting to know more about the people that are getting them, the end user, those communities. The result is the art of toboggan making will not be lost. John and Eamon will see to that. All right, she's done. Coming up next, find out who is the star of a growing Minnesota festival. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Rapala, Star Bank, and by Ice Castle Fish Houses. Up next, we're headed to southern Minnesota to discover what has become an international festival, a party for people who love owls. Welcome to Houston, Minnesota. Home to the nation's only Owl Festival, and now home to the International Owl Center. Wise about it all is Executive Director Carla Bloom. Glad to have you here. Welcome to Houston, Minnesota. We started the Owl Festival 14 years ago through the Houston Nature Center. people and we had 300 people show up the first year and we thought oh that's pretty good let's let's build on this so we kept doing it and after a few years we had people flying here from Alabama and California and New York we thought why are you flying to Houston Minnesota in the beginning of March for our Owl Festival, and that's when we realized nobody else was doing anything like this. It's fair to say, when it comes to admiring owls, lots of folks from the world over really give a hoot. It's not just modern times. If you look throughout the world, throughout cultures, throughout history, everybody likes owls. The Owl Fest is more about learning, however, because owls are the stars of this show. largest owls in the world. Um, how much do you guess that she weighs? 10 pounds, 6, 12 pounds, 9 pounds. Actually about 5.5 pounds. So 2,300 grams. In the company of owls, it's important to know who's who. I'm a snowy owl. Owls fly in all shapes and sizes. Let's just say owls are too owly to do tricks. Training owls is extremely difficult. It's like trying to train a cat to do something. They're not going to do it unless they feel like they want to do it. Yeah, for sure. Who is going to ask Uhu to do anything? Uhu's kind of gotten to be the star because she's big. She's one of the largest owl species in the world, and females are bigger than males, so she's a very big bird. And she has orange eyes, which is very dramatic. We don't have any owls in North America that have orange eyes. While most owls hunt at night, they do regurgitate the indigestible remains of their last meal. Hair, feathers, bones, called owl pellets. The idea of snooping through an owl pellet is to identify who did the owl eat? What is that? Um, what, do, what does it look like in here? It looks like 
Hmm, only the wise owls know, hunting and hooting the night away. Coming up next, we get wild in the kitchen over meatloaf. No joke. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cast Lake Chain of Resorts. Kitchen. It is all about heirloom childhood favorite recipes, and I'm here with Jim Kinberg from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And Jim, I understand we're making Grandma's meatloaf, but it's actually Grandma's venison meatloaf. That's right. It is definitely inspired from Grandma's recipe. We've given a little twist with the venison today, but delicious comfort food. I'm seeing some good ingredients, including number one ingredient, one of my favorites, bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so Jim, I'm noticing that we have two types of meat in here. So one must be venison, but what's the other? We've got some pork sausage in there. So we've got Ooh, two okay. pounds of ground venison to one pound of pork sausage. We've also got a little bit of binder in which we can get started with if you want to take those breadcrumbs. These are the Japanese breadcrumbs. Excellent. One cup, dump those in there, and then we've got a third cup of whole milk. And just pour that right over the top. You want to grab the uh, onions. There's some garlic over there. So just a little bit of clarified butter. Onions first? Onions first. So those are going to take a little bit longer to cook. We're also going to add a little bit of garlic. So that's one tablespoon, approximately three cloves. If you could grab me, there's some Italian seasonings over there. Got it. There's also a little bit of celery seed. Approximately two teaspoons of the Italian seasoning, and then one teaspoon of those celery seeds. Celery seed, seed. that smells good. So we're letting the onion mixture cool down because we don't want it to cook the meat. Correct. All right. So what is the next step? Why don't you add the salt and pepper? We've got uh, about a teaspoon and a half of salt. Just so dump all of it in there. Salt, oh yeah, okay. we're gonna get in there with our hands and mix all this right, all together. All right, I like it. About three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, fresh ground pepper. Fresh ground pepper. And then we gotta crack two eggs into this. All right, what do we do with the Worcestershire? <laughs> Worcestershire. Let's be honest, no one knows how to say this word, do we? <laughs> take that bottle and shake a couple of teaspoons okay. worth right over the top. That's gonna add some more flavor as well. If you wanna take the onions, those should have cooled off they enough. They cooled down. And last, we've got those soaked breadcrumbs going in there. And now we're ready to mix. This is nice. the fun part of cooking right here. Yeah. So the idea is you want to combine all those evenly, but you really don't want to overwork it because sometimes that gets the meat a little tough. All right, so we're ready for the meat. We've got our bacon laid out. We want to just kind of set it horizontally. Horizontally, that's the trick. Right, now we're ready to wrap it in the bacon and we're going to just kind of lattice it on the back, make a nice seam. If you want to grab that. So you're over. almost braiding the bacon to almost. make sure the meatloaf stays together. We're going to season it with just a little bit of dry rub, give it another little layer of flavor. And then for baking, this is actually going to go in that 350 degree oven, 30 minutes under foil. 30 minutes under foil. Last 15 minutes, we're going to remove the foil, let that bacon get nice and crisp and golden brown. Look at that. All right. Now there is a meatloaf. So we cook this to about 160 degrees internal temperature. Now the one thing I've noticed that Grandma always used on her meatloaf was ketchup. Correct. And I, I like that we're not using ketchup. Me as well. That's kind of a controversy in my house. I'm not a big fan of the ketchup on the meatloaf. However, my wife and kids love it. So actually, I've got a little smoked fire lake ketchup. We'll serve on the side. That sounds like good. It. It's there for you. But it doesn't necessarily need it. So there you have it, Grandma's heirloom recipe with a twist. Venison meatloaf, so easy and so wildly delicious. All right, I'm going in for a bite. I'm gonna dip it in the ketchup. Well, just well, because the ketchup's homemade. How is it? Very good. Excellent. Very good. Hi there, I'm Travis Frank. You know, I'm on the ice a lot, and one of the biggest mistakes I see people using a bobber that's way too big for the size of their hook. Let me explain. If I'm going sunny fishing, I'm using a little hook and I match it with a little bobber. Now if I'm going walleye fishing, I have a bigger hook and then I can go with a little bit bigger bobber. The point is, if your bobber's too big, you can't see the strike. Next time you're on the ice, 
Try matching your hook with your bobber, and I guarantee you're going to catch more fish. There we go. I got another one wrong. Coming up next, today's oh, Minnesota nice. Bound Classic turns Mr. Walleye into Mr. Perch on ice. Yep, coming in. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Hewitt Docks, Lifts, and Pontoon Lakes. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic is all about two good old friends, Ron Shera and Gary Roach. Two guys who almost never get the chance to ice fish together. Oh, I got one down there. If Minnesota was down to its last fisherman on ice. There's one, there's one. Here's Bet. All right. It would be Gary Roach. Oh, it's a walleye. Really? A little one. <laughs> now, most of us would get tired of fishing if that's what we did every day, but not Gary Roach. Oh, we got him. I got another one, Ron. Oh, another nice one, too. Oh, that's really? a dandy. Oh, that's a dandy. It's a big one. This must be the noontime run. Yep, they're coming in. These are ordinary fish, perched from Lake Winnie, and not especially big ones, but no matter. I just hook it across the dorsal fin. He baits his hooks and jiggles his fishing rod and never forgets to celebrate the moment. Oh, yes, he's here. He's here, Ron. Oh, Ron. You got a good one? Oh, Ron. He's a keeper. Oh, yeah. He's a keeper. Perch. Yep. The fish whose season never ends. So you can actually catch them year round here if you know, as long as you can get out to where the fish are. Perch is, is, a, is a walleye family, and, uh, and of course, they, they're just, they're like a bluegill. They're real tasty, you know, really, really good to eat. For nearly 40 years oh, yeah. now, Roach has he's been an perchy. angling icon in the Ooh, land nice of 10,000 lakes. Oh, he's right. Mr. Walleye from Merrifield, Minnesota. Yeah, Winner of tournaments with a name that adorns all kinds of walleye fishing gear. I always listen to my walleye. You know, he talks to me all the time. He tells me what he wants. All right, Mr. Shara. 22 feet, right where they're supposed to be, and a nice walleye. And so it goes, walleye after walleye. There's one fish for me. Fish of the day, huh? But it's always a bigger walleye for the master. A fighter, huh? A fighter, huh? Another nice fish. Look at him. One day at Knee Lake in Manitoba, my walleye fishing luck was getting warm. Hi, Ron shares my idol. Hi, folks. Meet me. I'm the new Mr. Walleye. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's a big one, too, Shara. The big walleye. Tuna style. Right. That means I'm only one behind you. <laughs> Who's counting? So that's the way it is in a fishing boat with Gary Roach. Fish and fun. And I should know. We've been fishing friends for three decades now. They say friendships last a lifetime. Hey, look at here. Yeah, but I gave you the best hold. That's what we're looking for. That's him. Huh? For Gary Roach, <laughs> fishing also is forever. Oh, another keeper. Hey. hey, man. That's Gary Roach. Ooh, I got another bite. Sorry, guys. I got another bite here. I got another bite here, I think. Mr. Walleye has always been one of my dad's favorite fishing guides. Yeah, certainly a good guide and an even better man. Well, that about does it for us today. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.